What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back. It's been a while since my last video. I apologize for that, but I've been learning this whole system and getting everything together and, and all the bugs tweaked out so that I can give you guys the best information possible about this so that you can be up and running with as hopefully less issues than I had. Uh, it's been about this long since my last video. Starting to grow out the, uh, the winter beard because it's uh, finally starting to get to be some temperatures here in Vegas where you can actually go outside and do something. I hibernate during the summer here. I don't go outside. Now I can finally start to go back outside. Learn the uh, Mach 3 system, which is pretty complicated, but once you get a hold, a hang on it, it's, uh, it's not that bad. Right now what I'm doing, is uh, I'm doing a, uh, a surfacing of the work bed because the machine is level. This, the stand that it's on is level, but what really matters is between your cutting head and your work board here, your waste board, this needs to be level so that anything that you cut is always level to the machine. So on the on the uh, the waste board, this is just MDF. I did uh, every uh, 10 centimeters. I did a hole, and I got a bracket on the bottom that accepts that accepts uh, screws to be able to clamp it, clamp projects down. So the waste board. What I did for the waste board is. I got a five foot by 10 foot sheet of MDF. That other piece is still over here that I got. I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, but it was like hell to find that five by 10 MDF, five by 10 by three quarter MDF. But uh, I finally found a spot that, uh, that had it and I'm able to get two waste boards out of one purchase. And the purchase was, uh, about $65 I think for that one sheet so I think that was a good deal um, piecing one together from a 4x8 sheet at Home Depot I didn't want different levels or, or an intersecting board that wasn't quite right so I wanted one sheet that was flat smooth no no junctions in it and be able to start off that way and also get two boards out of it uh, the very first project that I've been wanting to do is uh, I used to do beekeeping, but I don't do it anymore. And I have a ton of beekeeping equipment, brand new, sitting on the shelf. So I wanted to take the uh, the beehives that I did have, and I wanted to do an engraving in the front of them to kind of up the value of them a little bit and be able to sell them off and uh, recoup some of the loss that I had. And this is the design that I came up with.
not only will this give you a flat even surface to, for all your projects you'll also be able to stretch your machine out to its farthest limits and you'll be able to get a really good idea of what your actual cut volume is and where your limits are and if you've got any issues once it gets into the corners you'll notice those and you'll be able to correct them if you guys haven't checked out the uh, video I have of the dust boot system that I made I'm gonna have it linked up here as well so you can check that out it is a system that is completely interchangeable these bottom plates are interchangeable and you can you can print as many as you want if you get the file or if you wanted me to print one for you I can send um, all the different attachments I've got attachments that for two inch uh, vac hose four inch vac hose and one and a half inch vac hose and it's for um, the 80 millimeter spindle it could probably work on any 80 millimeter spindle I'm sure um, I show in the video how to use a really cheap dollar uh, bench brush from Harbor Freight to make this this thing works like a dream it there's no mess no nothing left over so it's worth it and it's able to be changed out for different things that you're going to be cutting so i'm going to give you a walk around here of uh, how i got my stuff set up how i got the machine installed and all that uh, over here we got the uh we got the vacuum system that is piped all over the entire shop and the waste board you'll uh you saw the video of the uh, the process and making that this is a uh a pile dj station control box so this is what a lot of djs go and they'll come to your birthday party or whatever and they'll set that up and this will have all of their um their equipment plugged into the back and they can control it by different switches so all their little disco lights and all that kind of stuff the uh, this wiring inside this comes it's only 20 gauge I completely gutted out the wiring out I rewired it um, with Romex so it can hold and withstand the uh, the current that's gonna get pulled through here I have this entire system I have it set up on a, it's, its own 20 amp breaker for the shop so if there's ever any issue I'll know that it's coming from this and it's that particular breaker as you can see I got a uh, laser that's underneath the vac, spindle, control box, and then you got the water pump. See, the water pump is down here underneath. It's not in fancy, it's just uh, the blue box store, five gallon bucket. It's got the lid, and I got the lines drilled in. Obviously, the submersible pump is inside there and it's uh four gallons of just water and then one gallon of this antifreeze this is going to keep it to where it's not going to grow any organisms or grow any algae or anything and it's also going to keep the metal parts inside the spindle head nice and clean no rust no nothing like that and this also should probably last a really long time because it's only in this little system. So you can see here, there's some extra um, hose line. This is pneumatic air line. It is a five by eight pneumatic line. If you're looking for some of this, this is a uh, clear because I wanted to be able to see the fluid actually moving so that I know that the pump is actually on and working because the pump is really silent. So you won't be able to hear that, especially with all the noise that's going on in the shop. You can see the uh, the orange line. That's where it ends right there. And I connected the the clear line. Um, no particular reason for this coiled over here except for to get it up to the pump. I figured if it's hanging and it's out, it's probably going to do some sort of uh, heat exchanging. So it can only it can only really help. And so I just did the whole line. It's going down and into the uh, to the pump basin there. Um, if you didn't notice, I'm going to point it out now that the Z motor is not the one that came with it. I had the X access motor go out and I had already planned on replacing this 
um, Z-axis motor because the one that was on here, the one that it comes with, I believe is not able to function like you want it to be functioning because of all this weight. This thing is heavy and it's also got to go through these uh, these uh, thread, threaded blocks that are in here which that takes a lot of power and just just in general whenever this thing is going up and down when this tool is plunging up and down and carving out your shapes you want it to be smooth and you want it to be very accurate this motor is the uh i think it's the it's a it's a nema 23 motor but it is the strongest nema 23 motor that you can get this thing has a whole lot more torque and it has holding torque which is what i really wanted I wanted it to be able to hold that weight and move it precisely, a lot more control. So the actual day that this motor came in, the x-axis um, motor went out. I don't know what's up with that. It fried, it got stuck, it couldn't, uh, it would pulse, but it wouldn't rotate at all. And I couldn't open it up, it was sealed up too tight. so. I wasn't able to find out exactly what was wrong with it. The control box that I had made, I ended up not using that, uh, the lid with the e-stop. I put the e-stop here and I ended up putting everything down here. All the, the wiring, all the good stuff is down here. I don't know how well you can see this, but spindle controller, all the wiring is down here. The control box, everything's in here in a nice protected little area. Nothing's ever going to bump into it. Nothing's ever going to be able to come in contact with any of this. And it should be well protected down here. And it's easy enough to get into and work on if you needed to. Alright guys, well that's about it for the this walk around update. We're going to start doing some projects. Um, I'll be able to show you some videos um of me actually working on stuff and designing stuff and i'll show you how i i work everything in fusion 360 and spit out the g code to go to mach 3. uh one thing if you don't work on fusion 360 or you have or you you have and you find it too complicated i want you to check out this guy named lars christensen i'm gonna have his um his channel links down below check him out look at his videos he's absolutely amazing he's very detailed very concise very organized in everything that he sh instructs to you and shows you um make sure you check him out uh give him a like subscribe and if you ever need anything he is very reachable send him an email he'll answer you he'll help you and you'll be set to go and you'll be really pleased with what you can produce using fusion 360 it's a it's an app that or it's a it's a program that you just cannot live without all right guys see you later on the next one we're going to start designing and cutting then all right bye